everyone it's susan um thank you for joining us today we are here to talk about what you need to know about filing your taxes this year and we're joined today by david lee from the irs's congressional liaison team um, he covers washington state and we also have sarah de burl who is the local taxpayer advocate for washington state um, if you have questions about filing your taxes you can write them in the comments section we'll be answered them shortly um, the federal tax filing deadline is April 18th, which is less than a month away. So I wanna make sure that you have a opportunity to get all the information that you need. Filing your taxes might be more complicated than usual this year because of COVID-19 and some of the relief programs that we put in place at the federal level. Congress passed the Historic American Rescue Plan last year to get resources out to you during some of the most difficult times during this crisis. President Biden and Democrats in Congress promised to deliver more relief to you, and that's what we did with the American Rescue Plan. The law was centered around four, four priorities, shots in arms, kids in schools, people in jobs, and money in pockets. Um, so money in pockets is the part that we're talking about today. It provided $1,400 stimulus checks for qualifying Americans and extended enhanced federal unemployment benefits to those who lost their job during the pandemic. The law also included a one-year expansion of the child tax credit, which sent monthly payments to parents beginning last July. This was one of the most transformative parts of the law and smart policy that I've led the charge on for years. The charge child tax credit is our largest federal investment in children, but before the American Rescue Plan, it left behind one third of all kids who are in families who earn too little to get the full credit. The American Rescue Plan set monthly payments of up to $300 per child, to help parents pay bills, put food on the table, and provide necessities for their kids. So this was a historic tax cut for middle class and lower income families. And over 1.4 million kids and nearly 860,000 families in Washington state benefited from child tax credit payments. Payments lasted from July to December last year and accounted for half of the credit. But the other half can be claimed when parents file their taxes for th this year. Um, if you didn't receive monthly payments last year and you qualify, you'll be able to claim the full credit amount when you file. By last December, monthly child tax credit payments had lifted 3.7 million kids out of poverty and gave many parents a sense of predictability during a very challenging time. And that shows how incredibly impactful the expanded child tax credit has been. Um, while the monthly payments have now expired, I'm fighting to bring them back and make this policy permanent because we know kids don't grow up in a year or two. So we'll talk about that um, and all the filing questions that you have, but right now I wanna turn it over to David um, and a reminder um, for folks to, to let us know if you have questions. Um, my office will be sharing links to the resources that we uh, hear about during our conversation um, in the comments here. So this video is also gonna be available on my Facebook page um, so that you can reference it in the future. So with that, let me turn it over to David Lee from the IRS's Congressional Liaison Team. And David, thanks for being with us. No problem. Thank you, Congresswoman. And I want to say good afternoon, everyone, for tuning in. And I want to thank the Congresswoman's um, effort in her office and, and putting this together. In the, this is a stressful time for everybody. You know, trust me, we at the IRS, we understand. And we want to make sure that everyone can get the message out you know the resources are there to help you in this in this kind of complicated times and like congresswoman mentioned earlier this is one of the most unprecedented years where we have um numerous tax credits up for grabs so we want to just make sure to get the information out and um, please let us know if we can help you and let the congresswoman's office know as well uh, with that said my name is david lee i'm with the congressional liaison's office with the internal revenue office and I'm responsible for Washington and eight other states in the Pacific Northwest. Now, the district liaison's office, basically, we serve as a primary point of contact with assigned congressional offices. You know, we provide information on tax law changes, IRS program procedures to help taxpayers. So with all these new recent updates on stimulus packages with no student deferral, forbearance, um, child tax credit, no, we basically try to keep the congressional offices offices up to date with all the changes that's happening. You know, we also respond to inquiries on general IRS administrative matters. So, you know, if any congresswoman's constituents are having issues dealing with certain certain, you know, sometimes tax matter issues, basically, and 
you guys contact the congressman's office, they'll reach out to either congressional liaison's office or taxpayer advocate's office, and we help you with that as well. And last and finally, you know, we, we organize meetings and briefings with the IRS on subject matter expert for the congressional staff, because there's a lot of things, a lot of moving pieces. Uh, things are very fluid at the IRS, lots of law changes. And so when those things get complicated, you know, the congressional offices contact us and we provide uh, the necessary support that we can support our offices. And with that, I want to turn it back to Congresswoman. Thank you. Thanks, David. Um, now I also want to introduce Sarah DeBurl. She is the local taxpayer advocate for Washington State, and I think she might describe what that is. So Sarah, thanks for being here. Hi. Hi, thank you, Congresswoman, so much. I'm so glad to be here. So my name is Sarah DeBurl, and I'm the local taxpayer advocate for the state of Washington. The taxpayer advocate service is actually part of the Internal Revenue Service, but we're an independent organization within the IRS. Think of us as the voice of the taxpayer. So people can come to us, let's say you're experiencing a financial hardship or an immediate threat of some sort of adverse action. And there's something that is not happening with your taxes, with your IRS stuff, that's, that you need this, you, the money. Let's say your refund is delayed or there's some sort of collection activity that's, you know, they're, they're taking their money from your wages or your bank account or something like that. So that's kind of the first thing. Um, or if you've been trying to resolve, you're not, you don't have a financial hardship, but you um, haven't been able to resolve things through normal IRS channels. Or the IRS has sent you letters saying they'll get back to you by a certain date and you haven't heard back from them. So we're the voice of the taxpayer. We work with, we work with you and we work with the IRS to resolve your issues. And so it, let's say you, you write to the Congresswoman about an IRS issue and it has to do with an IRS account type issue, refund, balance due, you know, examination, something like that. Well, those, those come to my office and when those, the, a case is made and a case is assigned to a case advocate and that case advocate works with the Congresswoman's office and the IRS to resolve the issue. So that's just kind of a basic idea of what Taxpayer Advocate Service is. We do have a website. It's www.taxpayeradvocate, all together one word, Dot irs dot gov. Um, we there's a couple there's different phone numbers you can call so there's a local number and a toll free number for my office. The local number is area code two zero six nine four six three seven zero seven, and the toll free number is eight five five eight three two. 7122. Now I can tell you we have limited staff in the local offices. So if you're unable to get through that way, you can call what's called the National Taxpayer Advocate Toll-Free Line. Give them a try. That number is 1-877-777-4778. And that's the, kind of a general idea about what TAS is, Taxpayer Advocate Service. We, we call each other, we say TAS, but Taxpayer Advocate Service. And we'll make sure to get all of those numbers and links um, out there so folks can see them. And one point that Sarah and David both made, um, if you have questions specifically and, uh, that are unique to you that you um, also want to um, get some help with, you can also reach out to my office and my website is delbene.house.gov. And we work with folks like Sarah and David to help get resolution to your issue. Um, so we're all working together here. Um, but I want to start off, and I guess I'll start off with kind of the, the basics here um, for both of you. What tips do you have for those folks who are filing their taxes this year to help it go smoothly? Um, David? So Congresswoman, me and David talked, and I'm going to take this one. Okay, go ahead. All right, thank you. So just kind of, there's some really basic things you can do to, to help make sure that your refund gets processed and that your refund doesn't get delayed. The first thing is, is use your end of year income statements, your W-2s, your 1099s. Um, 
a lot of times people are in a hurry to file their tax return and they don't have their W-2 or their 1099. So they use what they think is their last pay stub. And it might not be what was re what's being reported on your W-2. And if you're if what you report on your tax return, your income and withholding doesn't match what's reported to the IRS, that is going to delay your tax refund and it could delay it significantly. Double check that your information for you and your dependents is accurate. Make sure your names are put the same way as on your social security card and make double check your those social security numbers. It is so easy to transpose a number. And if you put, a, let's say you put one of your dependent social security numbers down wrong, the IRS is gonna say, oh, you don't qualify. That, that social security number is wrong. You don't qualify for this or that credit based from that per, that dependent. Check those social security numbers. Sounds simple and basic, but it causes can cause a lot of problems. Make sure you check to see what deductions and credits you're eligible for. There's a lot of like, you know, like the Congresswoman was saying, you know, there's the, the, the child tax credit, there's the earned income credit, there's a variety of credits. Make sure you're checking, you know, make you know one of the rules that if i pay no more than the amount of tax that you that you should take advantage of those credits and those deductions if you're filing by a paper a paper tax return that you mail into the irs make sure that all the forms and schedules are included a lot of tax returns get stopped because you somebody forgot to attach something for example if let's say um, for the, let's say you had the, the Affordable Care Act, the, the credit, and you forget to attach the form 8962, your refund is going to get stopped, or you qualify for earned income credit and you forget to attach the schedule. So make sure everything is attached to your tax return. And then I'm, I'm not, I can't stress this enough, and I know there is a lot of people who, who are uncomfortable and they're scared to do it the first time. If you can, file electronically, okay? They say that the IRS, the, that paper is the IRS's kryptonite, okay? Because I, every, every tax return that's mailed to the IRS has to get input line by line by a person. When you electronically file, it's automatic, it's fast, I, you know, I filed my tax return electronically on a Tuesday and by the filing following Friday, I had my refund. You get acknowledgement when the IRS accepts your tax return and it's just like, it, it's a way to put you at ease and the delays in processing paper tax returns these last couple of years and this year are significant. So file electronically if you can. And I know David's gonna talk a bit more about that. Um, That's it. Thanks, Sarah. Um, file electronically if you can. I'll repeat exactly. that. Exactly. File um, electronically. So um, Sarah brought this up in terms of the issues um, folks have filed um, previous returns and um, and haven't necessarily heard back. Or, and then we know that there is a big backlog right now um, at the IRS. Um, David, what's happening to try to get that under control? Um, especially when people are still waiting to hear back on former returns. Thank you, Congresswoman. Um, well, I think what we're dealing with is we are dealing with unprecedented amount of backlogs. Um, and just, I think just this week, the commissioner came out, you know, with a pledge saying that the IRS will eliminate, you know, 20 million backlog unprocessed returns by December of this year. And we've also announced plans to hire 10,000 additional new employees to tackle this particular issue, 5,000 this year, 5,000 next year. So we're doing everything we can possibly to tackle um, this, this, this extreme problem that, we're, that we have right now. And I think the question is also about filing the returns. And I wanna just let you know, um, Sarah brought up a really good point as well. As a taxpayer advocate, you know, they can also accept cases if there are situations where the return has been unprocessed for a certain amount of time and they're dealing in taxpayer dealing with certain hardship they can certainly contact you know the congressman's office for a congressional inquiry and they can either come to us as a district liaison or 
local task force advocate, and we can see what type of assistance we can provide for them. Did you want to add anything, Sarah? Thank you, David. No, I think you really covered it. You know, like you said, um, I also heard today that that um, the back that the commissioner said that the backlog should be um, up to date by by December, which is a long ways away, but it's coming. So yeah, you you thank you. I, you really covered it well. Thank you. Thank you. And I just want to. Um also add that uh, the IRS has been re under resourced for decades um, and the budget has been cut. And so it's been, made it harder and harder for folks who work at the IRS. Um, I serve on the Waste Com and Means Committee. This is part of our jurisdiction. And I think we need to make sure we're, we're providing additional resources so that um, the IRS has all the folks and resources they need to do the job that we have given them to do. And so, um, in the most recent government funding uh, legislation we passed, we provided the IRS with an increase of 675 million for the previous year. And this is the largest increase in IRS budget since 2001. And it's really to help make sure we can, um, that the IRS is able to find the pe hire the people and have the resources they need to do all the work that we need them to do, um, including on new policies like the child tax credit um, that they've been administering. So just want to throw that in there because um, this has been a, a challenge that uh, has been um, in place for a while. And so um, I want to make sure that I pointed that, that part out too. Um, so uh, the one question um, also folks have wanted to know is what happens if they never receive their child tax credit payments? Um, what should they do? That's a great question. Um, thank you, Congresswoman. Um, if you have never received your child tax payment, I mean, first and foremost, I will want to tell you that, like kind of what Sarah mentioned, we're going to try to repeat this mantra from the beginning till the end. We ask you to please file. Please, please, please file your return. You know, And the first thing you want to do is if you never receive any payments, like the Congresswoman mentioned at the very beginning of, of this, you know, this episode, that you want to make sure that if you did not get it, you you want to make sure you qualify for it. So find out if your child qualifies for the ta child tax credit, and you can certainly find that out with a link on the irs.gov website. I know it may seem imposing when you go to the irs.gov website, but we have very good FAQ pages that explains line by line what you need to do. And at the end of this, you know, at the end of this um, this meeting, basically, I will make sure for all the link to the office to Congresswoman Congresswoman's office, and they can forward that out to anyone that's looking for it. So first and foremost, check to see if your child qualifies for the child tax credit, and after that, consult a tax professional to file your 2021 1040. Okay, and if you are not going through that route, you know, the IRS provides free file options. And it's, it's basically online free file options. If your adjusted gross income is you know, $73,000 or less, you can qualify for these services for free. And you never know, by filing a return, a 2021 return, you may find out that you're claiming additional monies. You know, the, the, the rebate recovery credit, the EITC, child dependent care credit. And so like the Congresswoman mentioned in the very beginning, there are many, many monies on the table this year that Congress has have passed. And we really want to make sure all that money get into the hands of the American citizens that qualify for them. So please contact, you know, IRS, if you need help, if you need assistance, contact TAS, we can help you figure out if you qualify, and then file. And any other suggestions on where folks should go to just get help with their taxes more generally, not just specifically on the child tax credit? That's a great question. Um, you, we certainly recommend, you can certainly go to our, our VITA sites. VITA is a volunteer income tax assistance site that we offer and also tax counseling for the elderly, the TCE. And so basically those two are great resources that the IRS provides for, for anybody basically that qualifies for them. The VITA sites, volunteer income tax assistance, you know, they, um, the criteria is that if you make $58,000 or less, 
you know, per, any persons with disabilities and limited English speakers will qualify for the service. So we want to recommend, you know, go to those sites as well. The TCE is basically free tax help for those 60, year, 60 years of age or older. And they specialize in questions like about pensions and retirement and related to senior citizens. So if you have anything like that, you know, qual you qualify for those, definitely go to those. And also, we certainly welcome you to contact our tax care, you know, assistance office, tax offices. You can certainly con contact them, make an, any of those offices, majority of them, I would say they're by appointments only. In some offices, they do have Saturday and operation hours. So we want to ask you to please come to our website, irs.gov, and take a look at those information that we have out and the resources is out there. We want to make sure everybody take hold of every opportunity to claim these credits. Um, I was at a, a data site this morning um, up at the University of Washington at Bothell, and it really is uh, incredibly helpful to have those available. Um, volunteer income tax assistance, as David said. Um, so they're all over the region. Um, they were mostly virtual before, but I think they're more back in person now this year to help folks out. So um, another great resource. Um, and then uh, one question, kind of this is an example of a lot of questions that folks have. Um, this one is, I received a letter from the IRS telling me I didn't pay my taxes, um, which it was because of, because of the backlog. Um, and so will they be seizing my property? What do I do? Um, I think there's a lot of fear about some of the notices that had gone out. Yes, yes, definitely, um, Congresswoman. Um, as a former, before my life as a congressional liaison, I was a field officer, you know, for, for 10 years. And so I, I definitely understand the, the consternation, the fear people have when it comes to getting notices on uh, seizing properties and things like that. Uh, one thing I want to want to just rest assured and lay this claim out there. The answer is, the answer to that question is definite no. You know, if you receive letters that something is, you haven't paid your taxes, would there be season of properties? Please make sure to contact the number on that letter first. Now, the IRS, before we go out and seize properties or seize any assets, no, there are numerous letters that we sent out beforehand before any of those actions take place. So we ask you to please contact the number on the letter. Please don't discard, don't disregard it. You know, contact the letter. Right now on the IRS website, again, the irs.gov website, if you just type in, need to make payments on the search box, it will bring up a link. It will explain to you the different options that you have. You know, you can make electronic payment options, installment agreement, and if you owe $50,000 or less as a personal income tax, you know, it, the installment agreement criteria is quite liberal. It's quite easy to, to get approved. So there isn't a lot of high, high threshold to pass for that. You know, if you have a hard time you know, paying your taxes, paying your bills, the IRS also offers hardship programs for individuals that qualify. And we also offer offering compromise. If you really don't feel like you can you can pay it off and you want to make one lump sum offer. We also recommend that you take a look at the irs.gov website and take a look at the offer and compromise option. But so the, the most important thing is please don't disregard the notices. I mean, we don't just come out and and, and start, and start um, seizing assets, but we do please recommend that you contact us, give us a call. We can work out an arrangement and that's the best way to go. And it's also true that some people might have gotten notices that um, were just automatically sent, even though there were delays because yes. um, of backlog and processing. Yes, right? de definitely. Yeah. And then we, we were in the process of um, suspending many notices because of that particular issue. Because these notices were being sent out, we were getting numerous generated calls and, and customer inquiries. So we understand that. So that's why if you get that, you know, don't fret, please give us a call and we can work through that for you. Great, thank you. Sure. Um, one other question folks had, uh, are unemployment benefits taxed by the federal government? Um, I guess I'll start on this one. Uh, the, the American Rescue Plan allowed workers who received unemployment benefits in 2020 to deduct up to $10,200 from their federal income taxes if their household made less than $150,000. Um, that's to help avoid big tax bills for those who were unemployed. Um, 
Sarah, what if people already filed their taxes and need to make a change? Um, anything you, any advice you have for them? Congresswoman, what I would say is the IRS is working on systemically taking care of this. So if you already filed your taxes and, and before this law came into play, the IRS is working on reducing your, taking away that $10,200 or up to $10,200 or for or a married couple for both. They're still working on it. They're not done. So you don't, if, if you, you should not do anything. They are still quite behind. Um, one thing that people should think of, remember though, is that doesn't mean you're getting a $10,200 refund. What it means is that ten thousand two hundred dollars is redu is taken away from your income. So let's say your tax liability was already zero because you know you, you had your income and then you you know with your deductions and such, your taxable income was zero, and so you got back all of your withholding or you didn't owe anything. Well, that ten thousand two hundred dollars being reduced from your income isn't going to change that. You're not going to get more money if you've already gotten back everything you could possibly get. So that's something to keep in mind. Um, I did ask today to see if there's anything new on what's taking so long with with this, and the information is still the same. They've gotten out millions of them, but they're they're still they're still going through a lot of them. So I know it's really hard to be patient. But I would have to say, please just be, please be patient. It will happen. Okay. Patience is another important one um, as we go through this process this year too. Um, yeah. If someone filed their tax returns by mail, will there be penalties if their 2021 returns don't get processed by the tax date because of the mailing backlogs? Um, David, do you have? Yeah, well, thank you for the question, Congresswoman. Um, the answer to that is no. Um, I want to just confirm that with you. As long as the return is is filed on time, and when I say filed on time, your consider is considered on time if the envelope is properly addressed, has enough postage, is postmark and deposit in the mail by the due date, which is April 18th of this year. So if you're doing by mail, which I'm really hoping you're not, but if you do, it's April 18th if you if you postmarked it. But if you can, please, if you can do it on e, via e-file, as long as you e-file it with a confirmation receipt by April 18th, then that's considered on time. So we understand it's taking a lot longer than usual for us to process these returns. So we're not going to penalize you during the time that we are processing these returns, as long as it shows that it's postmarked or you have electronic certification is filed on time, it's considered on time. So one misnomer I wanna just make sure everyone understands, I mean, coming from collection before, even if you are, even if you owe money, please make sure you file because fair, failure to file penalty is by far a lot more than fair to pay penalties. So if you, even if you owe money, just file the return on time. And if you cannot file the return on time, please file an extension. That gives you six more months until October 15th. And that gives you more time. And if you do owe money, uh, extension to file is not an extension to pay. So please make your voluntary payments as much as you can, even though the backlog of processing, that does not take away the interest and penalty on the money you owe. You, that you're going to owe. So I just want to make sure to set that clear. If you do owe, you know, even if you owe, don't just not file. File the return. And if you do owe, please make voluntary payments. So I want to just- And the sure extension has to be in by the 18th as well. Yes, ma'am. If you're going to file 18th. an extension. You don't get extra. You, you can't go past something. You got to do something by the 18th. Absolutely, Congresswoman. Absolutely. The fair, the, yeah, that, that's, I mean, because of working in the frontline collection, a lot of people, they, they, they get scared. They owe money on their return. So the first thing they do is, I'm not going to file anything. If I don't file, you can't charge me anything. You don't know how much I owe. And what they end up happening to do, they, they accrue both the fair to file penalty and fair to pay penalty, which is a lot more. And, and like, like Sarah mentioned at the very beginning, we don't want you to pay more than what you have to pay. We don't want we don't want to charge you interest penalties. So just please file on time. 
If you have problems, again, go to our irs.gov website, type in how to make your payments. We have hardship program, we have payment options, we have offer and compromise. Like we're here to give you as, as many resources as we possibly can to help you avoid these things. Thank you. Um, thanks Thank for you. making that clear too. Um, sure. uh, so uh, Sarah, a good one for you. What should someone do if they didn't receive their stimulus check? That's a really good question and answer. It really depends. Did they did somebody not receive the stimulus payments because they are tax they they mailed in a tax return that never got processed, in which case it's not going to happen until the tax return gets processed, or did the stimulus payment go out and you just never got it? Maybe it went to the wrong bank account. Maybe it went it was mailed and it, you just you didn't get it. One of the things. You know, the IRS, when, it, we, when you get a letter from the IRS, I know even when I get a letter from the IRS, and I've been, I, I've been the IRS employee for 30 years, I'm like, oh, what did I do, right? But I open it because I know I better. But a lot of people, you get this letter from the IRS, and there's kind of some fear. And you kind of, you, you know, you might put it away and say, I'll look at it later, and then you forget. If you get something from the IRS, open it. Because you you will you you will you should have gotten a letter telling you how much you received in stimulus payments. If you it says you got a stimulus you got stimulus payments and you they never showed up, you need to call the IRS, the 1-800-829-1040 number. Um, I know the wait times can be long, but you need to find out. There's also one of the things that and there's some controversy about this right now because of how you have to to, to do it but on the irs.gov www.irs.gov which as david says has a lot of fantastic information on it it's it's very searchable you can create an online account and if you could create an online account you can look to see what stimulus payments the IRS shows were sent to you, what ad advanced child tax credit the IRS was said was sent to you. But if you truly never got the stimulus payment, then you'd want to claim it as a recovery rebate credit on your tax return. Um, but that said, you know, I, don't be afraid to open your mail or call the IRS. I can tell you that I've worked for the IRS a really long time. I have met, I work with the most wonderful, amazing people. The IRS is not scary. The, the only time the IRS is scary is if they, you ignore them, ignore them, ignore them. If you continually ignore them and you owe money, then it might get a little scary. So don't ignore them because the IRS is like, if I want, we're going to owe money to anybody and I was wanting to figure out how to pay it back, it would, I'd want it to be the IRS because they are, the IRS is really fantastic about working with people to do to resolve things and to get them onto some type of a some type of a plan that they can do so i i don't know if that um completely answered your question congresswoman but it's kind of a great area no that's helpful and i also want to point out that to folks that um you can also contact your member of congress um for for help on issues um um, we have a casework team that will help navigate some of these issues um, with the IRS. So you can also, again, to contact my office, go to our website, which is delbene.house.gov, and we'll keep adding the, all these links to the comments and um, so that you can find them. Um, you know, one thing I brought up earlier to uh, in a major provision uh, in in um, in the American Rescue Plan um, that we passed was the expansion of the child tax credit. And just wanna remind folks that the child tax credit sent out monthly payments from July to December that went up to $300 per child, but you still get the other half from the beginning of the year and that comes with your filing the taxes this year. So parents who received their monthly payments last year, the other half of the credit can be claimed when you file your taxes so um, if you didn't receive monthly payments, and David talked about this a little bit, um, and you qualify, you can claim the entire credit when you file your taxes. 
um, single parents making under $112,500 a year and married parents making under $150,000 qualified for this expanded credit. So um, again, make sure that you keep that in mind because we want to make sure people get the entire year of availability of the credit that they would do. So um, let me, I think that's all the questions we've got right now. Um, just wanted to see if there's anything else you wanted to add. Um, let me see, Sarah, is there anything else that we missed that you might want to mention? Thank you. You know, I really feel like like we covered everything. I know there will be more questions and um, I'm always happy to be involved with with anything that can assist um, you and your constituents. So, yeah, I'm here for anything you need. Thanks, Sarah. Um, David? Well, great. Thank you, Congresswoman, for your time. Um, no, I think I think this is a very productive meeting. You covered everything, all the pertinent information, and um, I want to just again reiterate what everyone's been saying here, what Sarah and what Congresswoman's been saying. You know, please file your return. Please file your return. Please file your return. And just letting you know, I know the IRS.gov website. It seems a little a little intimidating. You know, I also want to let you know that I was having a hard time researching on things on there as well. And what I normally do, I you can even Google it. If you just Google common you know, questions, it will take you links to the irs.gov website. And on top of that IRS, we also have a dedicated YouTube webpage as well. So if you wanna learn about child tax credit, EITC, whatever the credit that the Cong Congresswoman has been talking about, you can go to the YouTube website, look for IRS, and we have you know, dedicated videos produced by the IRS that explains all that for you. So if you ever need a little more information, in a video format, we got you covered too. Great, well, that's wonderful, thank you. And I wanna thank both of you so much for sharing your time with us. I know it's a busy, busy time for everyone um, as we get closer to the tax deadline on April 18th. So um, thanks to David and Sarah for joining us and providing helpful resources. Again, if you have a question that we didn't get to today, you can always reach me through my website at delvenet.house.gov. And um, we'll make sure this video is posted for folks to reference it later. And remember, the tax filing deadline is April 18th. Um, I encourage you to utilize the IRS's Volunteer Income Tax Assistance Program that we talked about, um, which provides in-person assistance with tax preparation. Um, and we've got sites uh, all over. Um, I was at UW Bothell today. So we'll include a link to helping you find a site that might be closest to you. And finally, you can follow me on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Rep Del Bene for updated information about tax filing and more. Thanks again, everyone, and stay safe and stay healthy.